Welcome to Win with Barlow, the podcast where we turn your entrepreneurial dreams into reality. With your host, Akira Barlow. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of DNA testing businesses. Looking to maintain momentum or ready to scale? This series is your guide to success. Let's get started. Hey, cousins. I hope you guys are doing well wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. (laughs) Listen, I am super excited to kick off my very own audio series. I wanted to do something because, listen, my comments on Instagram, they are in a doozy. I wanted to do something where I could literally explain, answer a lot of questions, and just have a centralized location where you guys could go and learn more about getting into DNA testing and actually starting your mobile lab. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Akira Barlow. Over on IG, you can find me at Win with Barlow and Barlow is B-A-R-L-O-W, okay? And I am all about serial entrepreneurship. I'm all about recovering from your past mistakes and just turning your life around to become something greater. That is who I am. That is what I advocate for. And today I want to talk to all of my DNA testing newbies out there. So for all of you who have been following me on Instagram, who have gone through my DNA training course, shameless plug. If you haven't checked out my self-paced DNA testing course, listen, I don't know what you're waiting for. There's a link in the bio, go and take it, learn how to actually start a DNA testing business and join us, join us in this $8 billion industry. Okay. So without further ado, is that what they say? (laughs) Let's get into um, just some tips for some of you newbies out there. So take the DNA testing course or join a live train class with me and my partner, my handy dandy trusted partner, Ebony Polk over at Polk Medical Testing in St. Louis, Missouri. She's been doing this thing for about seven years. And listen, she is my right hand. If you would like to join a live class, um, take a look at some of the options and some of the availability over in my bio, over on Instagram. Again, you can catch that link directly in the description box of this video as well. So let's get into it. What are some of my big tips for DNA testing newbies? What do I have for you? Well, my first advice would be number one, to really, really understand DNA testing, kind of build a passion for the business. All right. That's my first tip. Create a passion around DNA testing, whether you are, um, you know, helping fathers, you know, establish their parental rights. You want to advocate for fathers, or maybe you want to um, be a pillar in um, a community where they focus heavy on immigration. So it's so many different ways that you can kind of spin this DNA thing. But what I found to be the most successful is that if you find something to advocate for somebody to advocate for and you build a passion around this thing and you start to really educate yourself and you know the laws and you know about visitation rights and you know about custody um, considerations. A lot of times I get calls from people that just want to ask me questions about, hey, I signed a birth certificate because I was married, but I found out it's not my child. Um, I took a test at Walgreens. What do I need to do to make this right? And so we can literally give them some just general basic advice on the states that we offer. So my advice is always to just find someone to advocate for, and you may have to spend some time, you know, doing it or figuring that thing out. You may have to, um, you know, it may take some time to kind of develop that because I didn't know right away, like right away, I was just trying to get my bag right. Right. <laughs> I was just trying to get this thing going. So there was nobody I was advocating for, baby. I was advocating for the bag. OK. And so I was literally just focused on making sure that the business had visibility and I was out there and they wanted these tests. But as I started to work with people and started to build a compassion for my clients and people that I was working with, because I never thought about people having to 
take multiple DAs, right? Or having to test multiple fathers or just being in all sorts of just crazy situations. So this business kind of turned from me just focusing on making the money to actually making a difference and just having an impact on keeping families together or, you know, just being there to assist fathers who may be in crazy situations due to paternity issues. So that is my very first tip. My second tip is going to be make a plan. (laughs) I know you're like, what, Akira? Like, girl, we know we need to make a plan. But no, seriously, you need to sit down and actually formulate an actual plan for your DNA testing business. And for me, what that looks like is I sit down, I create my quarters, right? And I separate the business in four quadrants and I figure out, okay, who's my target? What is my focus for this quarter? How much money are we trying to make? What does that breakdown look like for certain test options? And who do I need in order to make this happen? So do I need attorneys? Do I need doctors? Do I need child support people at, you know, at the WIC office? Like, who do I need in order to really make this happen? So I literally would just sit down and kind of map these things out. I map out exactly who I'm targeting. I map out the social media content. I map out any special campaigns. Um, It's just really, really important to really have a plan to go by. This gives you something to measure the results. It gives you something to say, hey, we tried this and this doesn't really work. Let's try this. A lot of times when I'm working with people that are new to this industry who are starting their businesses, they don't stick with anything long. It's like they start on Monday and they may market on social media, then they disappear, right? And then they go put out a couple of flyers and they go put out a couple of signs and then they wait a couple of weeks and they do it again. It's like, oh, it's not working for me. It's not. (laughs) Like that is not the way to build a brand. That's not the way to build a business. Think about anybody that you work with and especially in a service where you're trusting them to be good at their job and you're trusting them to really have their passion, right? So what if you were working with someone who only put in 20% effort, you wouldn't really want to work with them if you knew that there was somebody else that was putting in 200%. And that 200% is going to show, it's going to show in the marketing, it's going to show in, you know, your clients, it's it's going to show in the actual business. So it's important that you sit down and actually formulate a plan, okay? And that plan is going to look unique to everybody. But the key indicators, of course, is who am I targeting for this service this quarter? Am I focusing on my more urban area or areas that are dealing with maybe will and testament issues, maybe I need to partner with some nursing homes. So you break down who you need to service and where are these people, okay? If I'm going to look for people who have issues, let's just say I'm targeting people for inheritance, right? I want them to get DNA tests to um, prove inheritance. So who am I kind of looking for? I'm looking for attorneys who specialize in wills and testaments and estate planning and all of that, right? I'm going to nursing homes because a lot of times under those deathbeds, baby, it's a whole lot of DNA testing and questioning going on. So maybe I need to go and market at some nursing homes. Maybe I need to go and do a free like bingo night or something at the nursing home to become a partner. What does that look like? So I'm actually strategizing what steps I'm going to take to secure these partners. And I want to get into partnerships on a future audio lesson, but just for the sake of today, those partners are people who can help you market without you being there. These people who can bring in consistent clientele for your business. So that is one of the key things that I recommend. So that is number two. All right. And number three, right? Number three, because I want to keep these things really short. Um, But number three, my advice is to show up, right? As a new DNA testing business, nobody is going to know that you exist if you're not showing up. And showing up is going to be unique again to everybody. But showing up, and I mean showing up online, I mean showing up in person, whether you're going to wellness events, whether you're showing up and you're going to the city council events so that you can kind of wiggle your way into the courthouses and the jails. Maybe you are showing up at the local daycare centers and you're putting on events or you're dropping off coloring books and things like that so that you can connect with all these different demographics of people, right? And showing up builds that credibility for the brand. It says, you know what? I seen this at the daycare center. Now I'm seeing a brochure at the laundromat. Now I'm seeing a 
flyer over here at the dentist office. Now I'm at urgent care and I'm seeing a bandit sign. When people are seeing something consistently, it's like, okay, this is a trusted brand. These people are consistent. They are everywhere, right? <laughs> I get that all the time. Like, oh my God, I was driving here and I saw this and then I went here and I saw this and then I saw your billboard. Like it's repetition. It's like, hey, I feel like it was a sign. I kept seeing it. I'm like, oh yes, girl. Yes, it's a sign. You need to find out who that baby daddy is. Yes, <laughs> this is a sign. So be, you know, consistent, show up and show up online. You know, when you are posting and creating content online, that is a representative of you and a representative of your work ethic. So if you've posted on Monday and you haven't posted again and this Friday, I'll be side eyeing you too as a customer. Like, where, where are these folks at? <laughs> like, why are they not? Like, y'all so busy that y'all can't be consistent online. Like, how is this even a legitimate business? Like, always model your business and your brand after a Fortune 500 company. Like, go to Coca Cola. Look, all of these people pages. Yes, they're paying somebody, but hey, you you got to do it yourself, right? If you are starting out. So, my advice is to show up. And be consistent in showing up and they're showing up online, they're showing up in person, they're showing up in your community. And as you start to be more present, whether you know, wearing your your business, listen, I am always literally people think I'm a nurse, okay? Because I got on easy mobile DNA groups every single freaking day. Okay. People literally think that I am a nurse. Like <laughs> I go to my son's school and they're like, hey, nurse Marlo. And I'm like, hey, hi. You know, I'm not a nurse, but you need to wear your brand, have your, your your cups, wear your pens, have your scrubs, have your lab coat, like be your brand, show up as your brand. That also gives you that energy and that momentum and to just show up for your business and to go hard every single day. So go to Eventbrite, go to some networking events, put in your city, see what's happening, see what's happening in other areas around you. I would even look up maybe a police association meeting or luncheon. Those are the type of things that I look for, networking events, things that I can show up and make connections for the business. It's always super unique to say that you have a DNA testing business. So my advice is to literally just be present. That is my advice. So those are my three tips for starting a, not starting a DNA testing business, but three tips for my newbies. Three tips for people who have already started the brand. They've gone through the course. They've gone through some training and they are ready to actually start their DNA testing business and make some money. These are the three tips that I have for you. Okay. So thanks so much, you guys. Thanks so much, cousins, for being here with me today. This audio lesson. Um, I think it's quite helpful, uh, will be helpful to many of you. Let me know in the comments what you're feeling, what you're thinking. And if this was helpful to you or not, be sure that you are following me on Instagram at win with Barlow. And I will see you guys in the second episode of our audio lesson series.